Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to trigger a step function using S3 events. So basically we're going to drop a file on S3 and this file is going to trigger an event and then this event is going to call our lambda and our lambda is going to start a step function. So let's see how to do it. First of all let's create our S3 bucket. S3 And then let's click create bucket and then let's give our bucket a name. I'm gonna call it Flavio Bucket01. Our region is gonna be US is two, but you can use any region you want. Scroll down, I'm not gonna change anything here, let's just create the bucket. Default settings. Okay, my bucket is created. Good. There's nothing inside, of course. So now let's go to our project. Let's update the POM file because you're going to need some other libraries from AWS. So let's add S3 SDK step function and the JSON. That's gonna help me write and read some JSON files. JSON files. And also let's update this version to 227. Okay, that's it for my POM file. So let's create a new Lambda. And this Lambda is gonna it's going to be called when the event from S3 happens. So that event is going to trigger this lambda. So that's how it works. So let's write this new lambda. My input is going to be an S3 event. So that's good that AWS already has those events, those module events. So it makes our life easier. The output is going to be just void, so we're not going to return anything. So what this lambda is going to do is just, let's just uh, let me just import all the files here that I need. And then what this lambda is going to do is basically receive the event, the S3 event from AWS. And then uh, we're going to create a new step function as execution. So first of all, the, I'll need the ARN for the step function, so I'll pass this as a variable, so it can be used later. I'll just instantiate my JSON object from Google. Uh, this is my handle request, my input is going to be S3 event. I'm going to create a hash map with some uh, properties that I want to input to my S, uh, step function. So it's going to be my input and my action. So my action is going to be just process, my input is going to be my own data. So this data is going to be passed later here. I'm going to call it my data. I'll pass this. And then the event is going to be just the event that comes from S3. I'm going to pass the whole object so we can see that later. My ARN. And then this is how you instantiate the step function builder. Oops, let me just fix a little thing here. My input data needs to be, uh, let's call it S3. And that's pretty much it for my Lambda. So let's update the Terraform stuff. Let's go to the module. Let's add some variables that I'll need to input. So I need the bucket and the bucket ARN. So let's create those variables as input variables to my module. And then let's go back to the Lambda. And then inside the Lambda, I'm just going to have to create a new Lambda for the new code. So this is going to be my trigger step function Lambda. The function name, same as the other ones. And then my handler, don't forget to update the handler. Java 8, 
same rule as the other ones same file name, same source hash difference here is I'm adding the step function ARN so this will come from my step function you remember that this is my main workflow step function and I need to pass the ARN of it so this is the one that we get inside the lambda to start the execution now let's add the triggering part inside Terraform and this trigger is going to be for the S3 so first thing we need to do is we need to add permission so call it AWS lambda permission allow bucket statement ID function name is basically the ARN of the function that's going to be triggered principal S3 source ARN is the S3 bucket ARN that I'm receiving as a variable okay and now we need to add the notification itself so I'm gonna call it bucket notification my bucket is basically the bucket name for the lambda function section let's just set the ARN and then for events any objects that are being created in this bucket prefix I'm just gonna use input and then uh, any XML that goes inside that input folder. Now let's update the environment caller. So config, let's add those two variables that I need and define the values for it. So it's going to be the bucket name and a bucket ARN. So my bucket name is Flavio Bucket01. This is my ARN. If you go to your uh, console and then go into your properties in your bucket this is where you can get the ARN okay that's it that's correct and now let's just update the variables to the color of my core module s3 bucket and just remember that the way I'm passing here the variables is specific to the version of the Terraform that I have which is kind of old so if you're, uh, if you're using a newer version, it might be a little bit different how you pass those variables and you can use it. Anyways, this is the S3 bucket that I want to pass, and then the S3 bucket AIN that I also need in there. That's it for the Terraform configuration. Let's just fix something in the validate lambda. Uh, we need to put the lowercase here in the records because in the beginning I was using uppercase for the R, but I remember that actually it's all lowercase. Let's compile everything. Looking good. Now let's do the Terraform commands. So let's go to the Terraform folder and run Terraform init and Terraform apply. You may not need to do the init all the time. Terraform apply. So seven items to add. So I delete everything before. So the really just gonna add everything now. Let's check the bucket and see if the information is in there. Event notification. Yes, it's been added. These are the filters and this is the destination bucket. Okay, so now let's go to step functions. And then let's upload a file. I'm going to use the command line to upload the file. Just do S3, CP, and a local file that I have, and then a bucket name and the input folder. Uploading. Let's now check if the execution started. Yes, completed. Let's double check what happened. Execution input. This is the event input. And this is my data. S3 process 
The event, as you remember, is the whole event that we received from S3. So there's a lot of information in here. Basically, we need the S3 and the bucket. That's the part that we were looking. And the object key, which is the file name inside that bucket. That's what triggered the event. This is the same input as the validate step. And then the output, if you remember, I'm gonna just going to clear everything and put bucket key and the validate results. And for the succeeded step, it's the same as before. We didn't change anything. That's it. Thanks for watching.